Stand by for crime. Hi. Chuck Morgan, KLP newscaster speaking. You know, for the most part, people associate deeds of crime with the male of the species. <laughs> Unfortunately, that isn't always the case. The story you are about to hear concerns a woman, one of the most ruthless and cunning of any of the hardened gangsters I've ever run afoul of during all my years as a reporter here in L.A. The opening incident of the story took place in a deserted warehouse some weeks ago. A man and a woman were target practicing with a revolver. Okay, Nick. Wait a minute. Take a look at the target. How am I doing? You're doing all right, Nicky boy. Eight bullseyes out of ten shots. Yeah? Not bad, eh, Trixie? Not bad at all. I figured you'd get better with a little practice. Guess we can handle that bank job anytime now. Bank job? Yeah, First National Trust, remember? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Look, Trixie, let's forget the bank job, huh? I got an in on the numbers racket with Bugs Flambo. Bugs Flambo, that's small-time punk. Okay, then we'll get into something else. Banks is out of my line, Trixie, honest. Well, they're gonna be in your line from now on, chum. Get that and get it straight. Oh, listen, Trixie... You listen. Trixie Talbot, don't waste your time on nobody and then let them walk out of the sea. Nobody. Okay, Trixie. Okay. You tied up with me so as I'd get you out of the small time. Okay. So I went to work and began teaching you the angles. All right. So now we're ready to move and you ain't Welsh and see. You didn't say nothing about a bank job. Didn't I? Well, I'm saying it now. It's the First National Trust tomorrow at noon. Or do you still want to go back to the numbers racket? Trixie, you wouldn't... Wouldn't I, Nicky boy? I guess you don't know Trixie Talbot. See what I mean? Yeah, I see. Four of them right in the bullseye. You're good all right, Trixie. You're darn right I'm good. I got a reputation and I'm keeping it. Nobody ain't gonna say they walked out on Trixie Talbot. She can't afford to have that kind of talk going round. I get it, Trixie. You got your reputation to think of. I like you, Nicky boy. I figured you were smart. I figured we could go places together. That's why I let you come in with me. Sure, Trixie. You give me a chance, all right. I ain't forgetting it. Come here, Nicky boy. Yeah, Trixie. Put your arms around me. Yeah. Say what I mean, Nicky boy. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Trixie. I'm crazy about you. That's better. We'll get along. Sure, Trixie. We'll get along, all right. Tomorrow at noon, we begin moving in on the big time. We start going places. You and me. Tomorrow at noon. <laughs> This is it, Nicky boy. Yeah. All set? Sure. Sure, I'm all set. Let's get going. Take it easy. Don't get nervous. Remember what you're supposed to do? Yeah, yeah. We've been through it enough times. What are we waiting for? All right, Nicky boy. Relax now. Hold the bank book in your left hand like you was going to make a deposit. Keep the other hand on the heater in your pocket. I know, I know. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Shut up. That guy would fall over in a faint if he thought there was going to be a stick-up. Here we are, dear. Give the man your book. Yeah. Okay, pal. This is a stick-up. Don't move or you get it. Y yes, sir. W w what do you want? What do you think we want, chump? Shove that folding green stuff this way. Y y yes, ma'am. Okay. Now go into the vault and bring out everything you can carry. Forget that, Trixie. we got always empty. Go on, you. Yes, ma'am. And don't forget there's a gun pointing at your back. Trixie, look. That cop. Forget the cop, I said. He ain't... He's on to us. He's just... All right, you two. Drop those guns. Why, you dumb flatfoot. Trixie, don't... Grab that door and let's get out of here. <laughs> Why, these dumb punks. Let them have it, Nick. No, we shouldn't. Get him to him, Nick. Give it to him. We'll show him. Dirty 
Lieutenant Bill Meggs of police headquarters dropped into my office to tell me about the robbery and the murders. Now, Carol Curtis, my secretary, and I have known Bill a long time. We both suspected the purpose of his visit was more than to just give me a good news story. Well, that's the story in the hole up, Chuck. You, uh, you got any ideas? Chuck's always got ideas. What we want to know is, what idea have you got up your sleeve? Never mind, Glamour Puss. What does your file record show, Bill? I've checked the files and records in every daylight bank robber in the country. This pair didn't follow the customary pattern at all. More than a week, my boys have been bringing in and questioning every known daylight hold of man in the city. Yeah. So far, they, they haven't even made first base. Now, the way I see it, they've been looking in the wrong places for the wrong kind of guy. Mm, that makes sense. Yesterday, a young trooper, Sidney Richards, in a, an upstate town, he noticed some smoke and some signs of life coming from what he supposed was an abandoned house. Went up to investigate and hasn't been heard from since. Wait a minute. If he hasn't been heard from since, how do you know he saw signs of life? And how do you know he went up to investigate? It stands to reason. We found the tire marks of his motorcycle in the lane that leads to the house, but none returning. Ah, so you figure that whoever was living in the house prevented him from returning, huh? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what we think. Well, why don't you go up there and find out, for heaven's sake? Well, if you use your head, GP, you wouldn't ask such a nutty question. It's like this, Carol. Suppose the people who are occupying the house are our bank robbers and that they've taken Trooper Richards prisoner and are holding him as hostage. Well, suppose they are. They can't hold him forever. What are you going to do? Just sit around and wait for... The life of one state trooper, Carol, is worth the lives of a dozen criminals. Now, we have a plan whereby we can keep young Richards alive. Here it comes. Let's have it, Bill. Two days ago, the San Francisco police captured one of the most ruthless killers this country's ever known. Yeah? Now, you've probably heard of him. He's called a professor. The professor? Yeah, yeah. I did a story on him a while ago. Uh-huh. And now, the professor's being held incommunicado by the San Francisco police. Chuck? We, we want you to go up there and look him over. What's the gimmick? I'll bet you wish you'd never asked. Well, assuming that the people in the abandoned house are our bank robbers and that they're holding Trooper Richards, there's only one person who could get to him without arousing their suspicions. Ah, I get it. You want me to assume the identity of the professor and make a call on the fugitive, huh? No. Ah, uh -huh, that's it, Chuck. You, uh, you look a little bit like the professor and... I think you could get away with it. No, I said... You stop getting in a sweat, glamour puss. There won't be any danger. No danger? Are you out of your mind? The first thing those two are going to ask is, how did you know they were hiding in the house? We've taken care of that, Carol. Two days from now, there'll be a daylight holdup in the neighboring town of Bolton. Crime will be laid to the professor. The professor? But you the said... Crime will only be attributed to the professor. Newspaper, radio broadcasts will attest to that fact. Yeah, that's a good idea. I could use the story myself. Uh-huh. You see, Glamour Puss, it will be only natural for the professor to take refuge in the abandoned house. Oh, that's it. Now, these two fugitives did, and why not the professor? I still say it's crazy. What if they've met the professor before? What it they... isn't likely that any small-time operators would know a big shot like the professor by sight. Uh, he'd be careful not to let him. No, I won't buy that. Chuck can't go. Listen to her. Now, listen, G.P., don't you realize a man's life's at stake? Yours will be, too, if you suck enough to agree to this plan. Anyway, your birds might have flown by the time you got there. Not a chance. The house has been watched night and day. You're out for the GP. Suppose you pipe down. Okay, go ahead. Get yourself murdered. See if I care. If I don't go, Trooper Richards will be murdered. Well, then, I'm going too. No, <laughs> isn't that bright? You sit down at that typewriter and get to work. Chuck Morgan, don't you manhandle I me. I haven't touched you. Come on, Bill, let's catch a plane for San Francisco. <laughs> right. Chuck! No, come back here. So long, GP. Take it out on the typewriter. Oh, that dizzy idiot. If he thinks that I... Well, I'm not, but I won't. And he'll wish he hadn't. Hi, Nicky boy. Come on in. How's Trooper Richards this morning? Okay, I guess. Look, Trixie, do we have to keep that guy tied up all the time? Do it's... we have to keep him tied up? Nicky, boy, sometimes I think you've got softening of the brain. Okay, maybe I have. Maybe having to stay here cooped up in this lousy dump's driving me nuts. Maybe... Shut up. No, I want to get out of here. I was a sucker to listen to you in the first place. <laughs> you got anything else to say, Nicky, boy? Oh, Trixie, put that gun away. Yeah, I'll put it away. 
One more crack out of you, chum, and the next time I won't miss. Okay, Trixie. Okay. You don't need to worry about me. I better not need to worry about you, you dumb punk. Why, if it wasn't for me, you'd be cooling your heels in a cell right now. I know it, Trixie. You're right. Forget I said anything, will you? If we could only get out of here. We'll get out when the heat's off, not until. But suppose they find Don't us. Don't be a dope. I've had this hideaway case for weeks. Nobody won't find us here. The motor cop did. All right, so the motor cop found us. Why? Because you were dumb enough to light a fire. Why, just for that, I ought to shoot your ears off. Okay, okay. I already admitted it was my fault, didn't I? That's a big help admitting it. How do I know you won't pull some other dumb trick? I won't, Trixie, so help me. You wouldn't want to. How long do we have to stay here, anyway? Well, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. Depends on how things look. Two more days. Look, Trixie, that cop's going to be missed. Now come looking for him. Let him. We're in the driver's seat, no matter which way you figure it. Anybody comes here looking for that cop, we make a deal with him. His life for ours. Now quit worrying, will you? We're doing okay. I guess you're right. Besides, if they was looking for the cup, we'd have heard it on the portable radio. Sure we would. Turn it on. Let's have some music. Okay, Trixie. And it has now become definitely established that the lone bandit who shot and killed the paymaster at the Roberts Oil Fields was the gangster known as the Professor. State police are making an intensive search of the countryside near Bolton. Well, how do you like that? The Professor's operating again. And in Bolton, too. The Professor? I thought he was laying low after the Chicago job. Looks like he got tired of laying low. Huh. Them dumb cops thinking they can catch the professor. Mickey boy, there's a character I'd like to meet. Him and me could go places together. Yes, sir. There's a guy who's got what it takes. You ain't never met him, Trixie? Of course I ain't, and there's few that have. He's a smart operator, that lad. Mickey boy, you ought to study the professor's technique. Maybe you'd get someplace. Ah, oh, Trixie, ain't I doing all right? That professor. Yes, sir. Him and me could really go places together. Hey, Trixie, listen. It's an automobile. Look, it's coming up the lane. It's the cops. I knew they'd... Shut up. They'll get us. We ain't got a chance. I knew they... Shut up, I said. You dumb cluck. That ain't no cop. What do you mean? It ain't the cops. Because there's only one of them. You think a cop would come driving up here in broad daylight like that? A trooper did. Nuts. This is some punk who's lost his way or maybe wants a drink of water or something. What are we going to do? If he sees that trooper... He won't see no trooper. Go on over and open the door. What are you going to do? What's the idea of the gun? Never mind. Go on and do as I say. You ain't gonna... Ain't I? Nicky boy, you got a lot to learn in this business, and you might just as well start now. Open the door. No, Trixie. Look, I'll talk to him. Maybe I can send him away. Only don't... You jerk, you do like I say, or I blast you too. Okay, Trixie. You're the boss. Conclusion of Stand By for Crime. Well, with the help of Bill Meggs and the San Francisco police, I had met the professor and talked to him. He was a tall, soft spoken man with an excellent command of the English language, which I suppose was responsible for his nickname. The fake bank robbery was pulled and my broadcast on it recorded. I was then given a black bag full of money, which I was still carrying when I knocked at the door of the deserted house. Yeah? What do you want? Oh, I, for a moment you rather startled me. I, I thought there was no one at home. What do you want? I was wondering if I could use your telephone. You see... Tell them to I, come in. Come on in. Uh, of course. Thank you. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I didn't know there was a lady here. You guessed right. There ain't. Okay, who sent you? Sent me? I, I don't believe I understand. You see, I was on my way Come to... on, come on. Quit stalling. Before I bump you off, I want the answers to a few questions. Bump me off? Do 
do you mean you intend shooting me? You catch on fast, copper. Copper? My dear young lady, are you referring to me as a police officer? Buster, you sure put on a smooth act. Hey, Nick. Yeah, Trixie? See what he's got in that bag. Okay. Give me the bag, bud. No, just a moment. Give him the bag. But... The... Very well. Here you are, my man. Thanks. What's in it, Nick? Jeepers! Well, what is it? What is it? Take a look. Well, I'm... A... Greenbacks. Bundles of them. Oh, come. There isn't so much there. I call that my small change purse. Small change? Say, who are you, anyway? Trixie. I know. That radio broadcast. The professor. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me look this lug over. Did the radio broadcast give a detailed description of the Professor Trixie? How do you know my name? My dear girl, your uh, uh, associate here has called you Trixie at least three times since I entered the house. Oh, he did? And you referred to him as Nick. Trixie and Nick. Could it be... No. No. Trixie Talbot would never allow herself to become involved with... Forgive me, I, I've said too much. You ain't said nothing. What's the matter with Trixie Talbot? There's nothing the matter with Trixie Talbot. Oh, I get it. Hey, Nick. Yeah, Trixie? Go on outside and take a look around. But look, ain't I Go here? on, go on, quit arguing. Okay, Trixie. You don't have to get sore. <sighs> That's better. Now shall I finish what I was about to say, Trixie? You don't need to. I know. So you're the professor, huh? At your service, my dear. I like that. At your service, he says. Yes, sir. Professor, you're just like they said, a real gentleman. Thank you, my dear. Sit down, Professor. Over here. Thank you. We got a lot to talk about. Yes, sir. We got to get acquainted. <coughs> Drive a little faster, Bill. Chuck may be dead by now. If he's dead, then there's no need of driving faster. Very funny. You cops are all alike. Cold-blooded. Now take it easy, Carol. Your boyfriend can take care of himself. I'm worried. One of those hold-up artists was a woman, don't forget. Ah, so that's what you're worried about. Well, that and other things. Hmm? What other things? Well, suppose Chuck doesn't get away with his neglect. Suppose they know he isn't the professor. In that case, as you yourself pointed out, he's dead. Oh, so... you. <laughs> Sorry, but there's no need getting into a sweat until we know there's something to worry about. Bill Meggs, you're heartless. Either that or you've never been in love. <laughs> well, there it is. There what is? Oh, the house. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. I've checked it enough times during the past few days. What are we stopping for? Aren't we going up there and save Chuck? Oh, sure, sure. We'll drive right up the lane blowing the horn so they know we're coming. You don't have to be sarcastic. <laughs> Bill, I'm scared. So am I. Okay, out you get. What are we going to do? Don't know yet. Let's, uh... Let's take a look around. Professor, I gotta hand it to you. You've done all right for yourself. <laughs> you flatter me, Trixie. And now, about the proposition you mentioned a few minutes ago. Yeah, the proposition. Professor, how much dough is in the small change purse of yours? Mm, possibly. $10,000. Just like that, huh? Ten G's and you don't bat an eye. Brother, you kill me. Now, look. See that bag sticking out from under the couch? Mm-hmm. Not unlike my own. It's just like it. And what's in it is just like what's in yours, too. Only there's more. More? Yeah. There's more than 15 grand in that satchel, Professor. You don't say. Yeah, I'm saying it. You add that 15 to the 10 you got? That makes a pretty good steak, don't it? Indeed it does. 
Yes, a, a very good steak, Trixie. You get it, then? We start out with 25 grand, see? You and me together. But, my dear girl, I have only 10. Sure, so I chip in five more than you. Okay. You got brains. You got fancy talk. You're a smart operator. I need a guy like you. We could go places together. Is it a deal? Hmm. It seems fair enough, but uh, there's one tiny item I'm afraid you've forgotten. Yeah? Yes. Nick. Nick? Oh, don't be a dope, Professor. You and me know how to handle guys like Nick. Why, when someone gets in our way, we just... There's a guy in the base sneaking up through the woods. What? They're coming here. Cops! Let me see. Hey, Professor, come here. You see something, Trixie? I'll say I do. Look out there. Out where... Good heavens, it... Something wrong, Professor? Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, put the gun away, Trixie. You can't... Friends of yours, maybe? Yeah, they're a couple pals of mine. I mean, uh... What was that? Sounded like it came from the next room. It did. It's the state trooper. Maybe he's getting loose. Shall I go look, Trixie? Young Sidney Richards, eh? So he's still alive. How'd you know about him? I read about it in the newspapers, heard it on the radio. You never. It wasn't in no newspapers, and it wasn't on no radio. Trixie, he's Shut a... up, Nick. So, Mr. Professor, you thought you could put one over on Trixie Talbot, huh? Trixie, my girl, I think the time has come for us to be frank with each other. Yeah? Nick? Yeah, Trixie? Go out the back way and take care of them two outside. Stay here, Nick. If you do as Trixie says, you'll regret it, I'm telling you. Pipe down, you. Go on, Nick. Do like I say. Listen, Trixie. <laughs> you gonna obey orders, Nicky boy? I'm going, Trixie. You don't have to get sore. Now, Professor, this is going to be a pleasure. You'll get twice as much pleasure if you let me explain who I am. For a guy who's going to be rubbed out, you've got a nerve, mister. Who are you, anyway? The name is Morgan. Chuck Morgan, the newscaster. Chuck Morgan? Mm. Well, what do you know? I thought that voice sounded familiar, but it was... Well. That takes care of your friends, Mr. Morgan. <laughs> you got any prayers you want to say before you join them? I've got a lot of things up. That you, Nick? Come on in. I want you to watch this. Tough, Trixie. The guy behind you isn't Nick. No. Don't try to kid me, pal. All right, Nick, speak up. The name isn't Nick, lady. Drop the gun. Why, you... Too bad, Trixie. <laughs> the situation well in hand. Trixie was considerably messed up in the fracas that followed. Nick was no problem at all. We found Trooper Richards uncomfortable, but unharmed. Carol and I got back to the office with only an hour to go before my late broadcast. So, I started dictating the facts at once. Wait a minute, Chucky boy. Well? You don't expect your listeners to believe that stuff, do you? What stuff? That it was a woman who influenced Nick to turn bank robber? I certainly do. If it hadn't been for Trixie's influence, Nick never would have. Nuts. How was that? I said nuts. I thought you said it. Women never influence men to do anything. Men are stubborn and self-centered and yeah? absolute... Come over here, Glamour Puss. Well? I am about to demonstrate that your theory is cockeyed. No kidding? No kidding. Now, I planned on going bowling after tonight's broadcast. Why don't you influence me to take you out dancing instead? Hey, that's a good idea. Mm. <laughs> Pucker up. Hmm. Influenced? I'm influenced. We go dancing. 